hello, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan. We welcome to the studio for the first time ever, uh, Agnes Mo. Woo! Woo! Uh, I love the whole setup. Like, uh, I can't believe that this is my first time here. I know. Where have I been? <laughs> where have you been, guys? Like, where have you been in my life? I mean, sister, you're incredibly cool. <laughs> you are. And you have quite the history, and you have so many hits under your belt. There's a lot to talk about. So thank you for giving us time. No, for sure. Like, thank you for inviting me. But you, you go, uh, but the reality is like what I said is true. Like, <laughs> you are a different sort of superstar. And I had no idea like how deep your superstardom goes and for how long. <laughs> so we'll get into it. Aww. By the way, everybody sleeps. We all do it. Today's interview being powered by our friends over at Vibersonic and Beyond Sleep. When you're looking for a new mattress, uh, go with the mattress that I sleep on. They've totally done a mattress differently, but it's also the best version of the mattresses that you know and love. There's speakers built into it, so you listen to your podcasts and your movies, and you play video games in a whole new way. But also, the mattress is incredible. Like, it's super cool and has, like, memory foam. It's absolutely amazing. Check it out. There's a link in the description below. When it's time to buy a mattress... Go with Beyond Sleep because uh, they'll change the way you sleep. I had no genuine idea that you were a superstar so early on in life and you've been building the career that you've been building yeah. since, is it fair to say, like six years old, five yes. years old? Yeah. How do you even, how does one <laughs> train or prepare for a career at six? Because you were doing albums, right? You can't, really. Like, you can't prepare for that. For sure. I think it was one of those things where, because, I, I mean, both of my parents are former national athletes. So, you know, obviously they didn't have no idea whatsoever that, you know, like their daughter would be in, you know, the music music industry. But they had a sense of discipline. Exactly. The, I, f I feel like I've always told my fans this. I've, I, I've always felt like... I'm an athlete working in music industry, uh. you, you know, working in entertainment business. Cause like the way that I see things in life, you know, the way that I produce things, you know, from my career, it really is like the discipline of an athlete. Um, and I think that's the reason why like I have this longevity, you know, in, in my career, I literally have been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> when you look at the, the, the lifestyle of your parents yeah. and you apply it to your own, what are the similarities and does consistency have anything to do with it? Um, I feel like definitely consistency is one of them, but I think what they celebrate is a little differently with what, um, entertainment industry would, ex you know, would celebrate. I think they celebrate more. So the work ethic that goes into it, you oh. know, um, the the pre-production and not so much the awards, you know. Even though you're the most w awarded human being out of Indonesia, is that correct? With over 200 awards? Yeah, about 300. That's fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, and, and I think that's the reason why, like, I always feel grateful that my parents, I mean, my family still treat me like a normal human being. And I think that's the reason why I'm still a normal person like I don't you know I don't act like I'm this superstar you know I don't you know I just feel like okay like I I I think I'm I'm good at what I do and um I think what's really good about me is that I'm probably one of the best students um ever you know because I I learn so much every day I study people I study you know the business every single day um but I've never been blinded by the the shiny things, if that makes mm. sense, you know? And, and I think that's the reason why I get to do what I do now and still have the feel to do it even after, you know, years. That's, I, that's fascinating because you take on new challenges to keep it fresh, right? Yeah, absolutely. But okay. So your first album that you drop is in 1992. <laughs> uh, it translates to the meow. <laughs> Who has an idea for you to even release an album? Okay. All right. So, okay. I mean, damn, I love history, right? <laughs> I love it when we go back to like 1992. I mean, that was almost the year <laughs> I was born and I'm song. 30. Um, so when I was three years old, I started singing at church. I, th You know, that's like the whole background of, of me being in love with music and all that. Because I started singing a lot at church. And I think by when I was four or five years old, 
maybe like four, actually four years old. There was like a talent agency or some sort, you know, um, a talent scout basically mm. that approached my mom and said, hey, like I want to make your daughter a superstar. And my mom was like, F you, like she's, you know, she's five. Like <laughs> what do you want to do for, for her, right? Like she has to like focus on, you know, her school and just, you know, her being a kid. But then I was actually the one telling my mom, like I want to sing. So I, I, I told my mom that, hey, I want to sing. I want to I wanna meet the fans. I want to, you know what I mean? And, and I think, you know, after a while, um, a while meaning like two years after that, um, there was another offer. And I remember my mom asked me if I wanted to do it. So I think like since the very, you know, like early age of my life, I've always been so used to, um, being involved in what I want to do in life, if that makes sense, yeah, you know, and, and obviously, you know, there, there's guidance, limitations and, you know, me being underage and everything. But, um, I, I remember that, uh, that, that decision came from me that I wanted to have an album, like put out an album. I mean, you don't just put out one album, you put out three and one of them ends up being the best album of 1999. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of comparable, you can make a lot of comparisons to like a Britney Spears yeah. or an Aaron Carter or right. anything like that. Yeah. It, it just, it was just happened on the other side of the globe. Yeah. Not too, too far, but the, the, the challenges have to be the same because yeah. you end up kind of pausing music for a second and you yeah. get into acting. Yeah. Is that strategic or what? Strategic. And, and my mom was like the, the, the brain behind it all. And I think, um, Cause it's, I, I think, you know, she, she, she thought about the longevity of my career and, um, she wants to make sure that I have all the flexibility in the world to do what I want to do. Um, and by that time she knows that it's hard, uh, to transition into, you know, a, a, an artist that people finally respect and they're not just yeah. like, oh, you know, like she's, she's cute. Oh, she's, you know, she's talented, but really like someone or like a real artist that, um, okay. Like, you know, like she's a real artist. Um, so she wanted me to kind of not take a break, but some, some kind of like that, you know, like take a break from music and to really figure out what I want to release. You know, and, and I was, I think, 12 or 13 years old by then. She obviously, she knows that I don't want to put out any, you know, child songs anymore. Yeah. But also at the time, also at the same time, she knew that I didn't really know what I wanted to put out. Well, and you're also in this very unique age because you're you're really discovering who yeah, you are. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like that's the reason why she wanted to she wanted me to take a break. But I can make the case that like that sh saves your career actually. Absolutely. Because it a absolutely. It points you in a direction that allows you to focus on television. Absolutely. And 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 by the age of 13, you know, that that's when I finally uh, I think 12, wait, no. I, yeah, 12 years old. I you know, branched into acting. And then I was um, lucky enough to actually have found or to, to be casted as the main uh, cast in one of probably the most controversial, Easily. Um, you know, TV show in history in Indonesia at the time. You play a, a young girl who is pregnant. Yeah, exactly. And, but you, when you read that script for the first time or the yeah. sides for the audition, yeah. What do you think? At first, my mom actually blatantly just said no immediately. Really? You know, because she obviously, you know, she's more afraid of my mental health, right? Like, you know, at, at that age and You're if 15. I was ready, you know, at that point. And mind this, I feel like the 13, 14 year old, year old back then with the 13, 14, 15 year old girls now. Different. Different. And and I remember that because in parallel Very in America, different. there's this there's a show called The Secret Life of the American Teenager. Yeah. Which is similar in story and was here in America was the biggest conversation. Right. I can only imagine what was going on in Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 you know, there's no there was no social media. You know, yeah. like pe the way that kids plays like you know we we play outside right it's 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 different so you know and and i remember i was 
I think when we first got the offer, I was 14 years old. Um, and we had this long conversation, you know, back and forth with the, with the, you know, with the studio and then my mom saying no to them. And then they still wanted me to, you know, be the main uh, actress. I think it probably took over almost a year, you know, That's until it, 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 it was really, you know, finally produced. Um, and she basically put it in the contract. Like there's no kissing, there's no this, like there's nothing that she could do without, you know, or like our approval. Like she really wanted to make sure that I was you know protected and I think like I really owed it to to her you know to be that protective especially you know at such a early age of my career um I was so young but I I'm actually grateful that I took that role well because all uh, all eyes are on you yeah because of the controversy that it causes just with the story being told absolutely and it's also at a moment in time where people were watching television in droves like streaming didn't exist yeah so all eyes were on the TV set. Yeah. I mean, that has to be scary, though. It was um, because, you know, like I I didn't know what I was walking into, right? Like meaning the stardom. Yeah, like you can shoot the whole show, but after it hits yeah, it, the it was, airwaves, it, it's, it's different. different. And, and thank God that there was no social media back then. Yeah, yeah. Because you know what I mean? Like who knows what they, they could have posted or what, you know, what comments I would have gotten, you know. But it was um, it was more of like a protective, you know, safe space for me at that time. You know, because I didn't really read the tabloids. I, I, I don't like read the tabloids. You know, I don't really like, you know, hearing what other people think of me. You know, especially, you know, at that age, I just focused on, you know, like I want to come to set and, and do my work and then go to school, you know, do it again. You know, just hang out with my friends yeah. and hang out with, with, with my family. Balance work and normalcy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But so- that was, that was, um, it was tough. And, and I do think that, it was one of those turning points in my life that really taught me how to be a stronger person. Um, yeah. What was the reaction to that show? Did it get? It was good? really good. Okay. Actually, it's it's number one, you know, rating show at, at the time. She becomes the highest paid teenage actress in Indonesia. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, you did your homework. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. We have a whole package. I love this. <laughs> No, I love that they actually, it's like they really care about me and my life. No, I love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 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 it, it definitely pays off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, like the show that becomes, <laughs> can I make the case that like that, like yes, the early albums change your life and the soap opera you do changes your life. Yeah. But that show really changes your life and your status within yeah. society over there. Yeah, and because I, I remember when I won Best Actress, um, I think that year, like, the, the next year, if I'm not mistaken. And I was the only 15, 16 year old girl, Huge. basically, you know, in that category. And then I wanted to, it was really, it was a surprise. Um, and obviously there's a lot of controversies as well, you know, surrounding that. Uh, so that was, you know, that was really tough. <laughs> yeah, but then strategy strikes again. Yeah. You don't act after that, right? You just go right into music. Yeah. But you also lay a seed for your music in that show because you do the theme song. Exactly. You're fucking smart. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're really smart. Yeah, exactly. You, you're smart. Your mom's smart. Everybody's yeah. smart. <laughs> right? Because you haven't acted since hey, that it's show. it's Asian in me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just this classic of like, leave while you're on top. And why would you overstay your welcome anywhere yeah. when you have other talents to tap into? Yeah. And, and I think, you know, by that time, it was just... Um, you know, like my mom knew that if I had um, entered, you know, like a label deal for like, you know, albums or whatever, then, you know, I don't know, like I might have been stuck in that, you yeah. know, whole position. But if it's only like single deal, uh, uh, that's, you know, the, the theme song, mm-hmm. then, you know, it would kind of bring me back to the whole music scene without me, you know, losing the flexibility totally. for, you know, just my artistry. But I am correct though. Like you don't act. You haven't acted since that TV show. No, no, no. I, I have, I have acted okay. after that. But we, we took a break basically to yeah. focus on the music after that, Got and it. then going back to acting with both, you know, basically bal- balancing out between acting and music. Totally. Because yeah. a lot of people going off of that show, you'd yeah. be like, oh, what is my next TV show or my next movie? Because you're, you're in a whole other stratosphere. Yeah, yeah. But um. 
you know, I, I feel like because I've never been, even since I was very young, I've, I've never been blinded, like what I said before, I've never been blinded by the fame and the awards and, you know, how much money I have and everything, you know. Um, I just want, I just remember... I promise myself to be better every day. And I know that it sounds cliche, but it, it really, it's really what I did. It's really what, like what I'm doing right now. Like, otherwise I wouldn't even be here sitting with you guys and talking about, you know, everything that I've accomplished in my life. But I remember I wanted to challenge myself every day. You know, like I, I, I want to do a characters that will, you know, challenge my acting skill. You know, I want to, I want to uh, create, I don't know, a, a, a new standard for music videos that I put out, you know, and because like, honestly, honestly speaking, I've been quote unquote directing my own music video since I was very young, but I just never really took the credit because I thought, you know, oh, okay, it's fine. Like I, I'm still very new, you know, so I'm, I'm a let the the professionals handle it but to be quite honest with you all the um the storyboards the storylines it all came from me since i was very very young um but yeah but so okay when you do return to music in 2003 yeah the album is called and the story goes yeah are you writing at this moment from your reality or are you writing just, I mean, where are you so at? So I, you know, by, um, in that album, I didn't write most of them. Like I wrote yeah. probably like a few, but then obviously, you know, like I talked to, you know, the producers, the songwriters, uh, my life story, my life journey. And, and that's kind of like where they uh, got the inspirations from, but yeah. Okay. So what from, that album and What Up A and Secretly, uh, how do you say that? Yeah, Ag Agnesius. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Uh, is there anything that you established in those albums that follows you today in the music we're listening to now? Yeah, for sure, especially in Indonesia. Like what? Um, I think some of the songs are, you know, still to this day, you know, some of my biggest hits. Um, in Indonesia. So every single time that, you know, I, I do a show in Indonesia, I always try to sing one or two songs from those albums just so that, you know, there's like this nostalgic uh. Uh, vibe uh, uh, to it. Um, but it really just marked me evolving as an artist and, and not even just as an artist, right? As a person, you know, whatever I, I, I wrote back then and how I produced my vocals when I, when I was in the vocal booth and how, you know, the message that I presented to the world, I felt like, you know, when I listened back, I was like, wait, I sounded like that. Oh, that, that was the message that I, and, and it's, and it's kind of cool to see, you know, the growth uh, uh, in me as a person. Uh, Do you write more and more between those absolutely. three albums? Yeah. Yeah. Your confidence changes, I'm assuming. Um, it's more about um not just the confidence. I think I feel like uh I need my stories to be told. Yeah, of course. Um, and my fans kinda owe yeah, I, I kinda owe, you know, my fans that. Um Yeah, so I feel like that that was just kind of gradually increasing organically. So I never thought of like, oh, I want to produce my own album. Well, I want to executive produ you know, produce my own album. Like there was no pressure in doing so. It's just that I felt like I wanted to do that. So I did. I just can't believe that you had a greatest hits album so early on in life. <laughs> right? Because from three albums, you end up being able to do a greatest hits album. Yeah. 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 And and it's it's the demand, you know, from the fans and, and the label um, as well. But that was exactly my reaction when they actually proposed that idea. I'm like, greatest hits. What do you mean? Like, am I like 60 or something? Like, what do you mean? But it, it was, um, you know, the, the sales and everything. It was really, really good. Yeah. Uh, and, and the fans loved it. So to me, like, even though I was a little embarrassed when I <laughs> No, because you feel older than you are, but it's really more yeah. of an iconic I status. Know, I know, right? And I said this ex exactly the same. And I'm like, are you sure? Greatest hits, guys. I'm still like, you know, like I'm not 60, you know, and I still want to like work on more music. But, but even that early, you ended up becoming a judge on Indonesian Idol. Like you must be one of the youngest judges in the history yeah. of any, the whole entire franchise. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it. Yeah, I really was. Um, 
And I remember talking to the production house and the creative team. I said, hey, um, because you you know how it is with like TV shows and and productions, right? Like sometimes they want to create drama for the ratings and everything. And early on, I already knew that, hey, if you want me to be in the show, I got to be me. Like you, you can't just throw, oh, you know, let's create drama so then the rating is better. Like, no, I, I just want to be there to share my experience and, um, you know, lift them up as as much as possible um, and just be a good mentor. And that, that was really it. Well, you come at it from so many different places and so much understanding of the industry. It's really sick. Yeah, thanks, man. As uh, long as I get paid, though. Yeah. That is a sonic change, though, that kind of yeah. leads you into a whole other realm. Because y- you follow that record up with the one with Chris Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it, it's... Um, is that wrong to say? Like No, get- no, no. I, I think it was... Like, I, I think at that time, I was finally ready to just listen to myself and know exactly what I wanted to put out. Mm. You know, because before that, I, I still had this pressure from, you know, the label that I was on before or, you know, uh, my family being, you know, part of my management as well. Um, and I was a little bit, you know, younger, I guess, before that to really just take full control over the creatives like okay like what sound like sonically what what do I want to put out or a message like what do I want to say um and I knew that it it will always create controversy like if you think about it people don't like changes people like something that they can predict you know something predictable it's the same thing like you know since you you brought up uh, Britney Spears it's like you know when you look at Britney you know when she first put out her single and then all of a sudden the I'm a slave for you like people would talk about it yeah. but honestly I love the I'm a slave for you from Britney Spears I feel like that's really good for her right um and I think it comes down to whether you can stand the trial, you know what I mean? Like whether totally. you can really just, okay, no, like this is what I want to put up because that's what I believe in. And before, you know, I moved to, you know, the US, I felt like I had always had that pressure and I always had to compromise a lot more that I, than I wanted to compromise, even though, I mean, thank God it worked, you know, the way it worked, but... Um, I wasn't feeling really me, if that makes sense. Is there a moment where you realize that you being you in these songs is actually working in Indonesia? Um, yeah, because I feel like, thank God the generations changed. You know, I feel like now with the Gen Z's, you know, being the, the, the consumers, you know, they're more open-minded to just varieties of music, you know, genre-wise. How about the people you grew up with? Like the people who grew up with you? Um... It's yes and no. Um, there's a lot of like, oh, are you sure that you want to go this route? Or, or even sometimes some people thought that they knew me better than myself and would say, oh, but you weren't like this before, you know, when you, before you moved to the U.S. Like you weren't like, but they just don't know what happened behind the scene, right? Yeah, they they, they don't know that you know, some of these decisions before I was finally quote unquote free, it was done by a lot of people. And then it made me in a place where, oh, like I can't wait till I just be my, you know what I mean? Like that kind of um, feeling. Is it weird though? Because like, I'm assuming Sony's the label, right? And that's kind of who you're alluding to, right? No, 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 that that, that wasn't. So um, Coke bottle was actually maybe the, the mark of me changing my sound. I, I, I don't want to say like changing my sound. It's more so me finally being myself. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, and, and Coke Bottle, when we did it, it was done independently uh, at first. And I actually have a really, really inspiring, or uh, you know, just amazing story behind it. Um, as you probably already did your homework anyway. <laughs> but um, when I was 19 years old, and I remember that year I won um, awards in both acting and music. And one of the press asked me, what what else do I want in my life? Like, what else do you want in your life, Agnes? Like, like it's like I got it all. And I didn't feel that way. I felt like it was just the beginning. And I said, I want to go international. Like, I want to go global. I want to win my first Grammy. And people were against this in Indonesia. Absolutely. At that time. They at felt that time, like you were leaving them behind. 
I think so. And and but but the thing is, what I have to, what I have to say is, all of my fans were rooting for me. You know, and I think, you know, my family too, you know, even though of course they're like, are you sure, you know, are you strong enough to like, you know, start, start over? There's like a little bit, you know, like push and pull. Um, But a lot of people were, you know, supporting me, but obviously, you know, with a lot of support, there's a lot of hatred as well. Um, and what's and I always said this in all my interviews. What started off just as me uh, saying what I wanted to say that that in that moment, like spur of the moment, it actually became something more serious for me because I felt like, oh, okay, wait, this actually became my fuel. Like I now I really want to do it. Yeah, you know, you and saying it publicly ultimately helped you manifest it and exactly. keep you on track. To yeah, but but it. I feel like at that time. The whole idea of oh, manifesting it into the world wasn't oh. even an idea back then, right? Like it was everything is just more like, I mean, look at the divas back then and the divas now. Like, you know, if you think about artists back then, everything needs to be very um, uh, curated and very, you know, not for public. There's always like this mystery, like you can't say, you know, what you say uh, or what you think out right. loud. So... In that moment, because I feel like the audience were so used to that kind of, you know, uh, uh, diva or like artist, uh, I mean, artist or superstar, then when they heard something really real coming out of my mouth, it shocked them. You know, like it, it like, wait, like she, she, she speaks up. <laughs> but, but ultimately wait. that like leads into a whole new breed of diva and superstar. Yeah. 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 Obviously. I mean, now I feel like everybody wants to just be as down to earth as possible. People want to, you know, be able to share their, their, their own life, you know, with the fans. It's like a different trend. Right. And there's a balance. I think like the real like superstars have figured yeah, out this oh, balance. The balance like, is always good. Yeah, right. When it's, they're out and about, it's like grounded as fuck. It's yeah. Very different. Yeah. Very different. And, um, and again, it was just like, I had to go through different eras and, and being able to adjust to uh, the demand uh, from the fans in that specific time, you know? And um, I got invited by Dick Clark Productions um, office uh, to be the co-host of um, uh, the Red Carpet of American Music Awards. And even that, you know, there's a lot of people saying, again, not my fans. My fans are always, you know, like, you know, rooting for me. But quite some people say, well, it's just the red carpet of American Music Awards. Oh, it's just the co-host. Like, you don't have to really, like, really be happy about it, you know? Like, pe- people will always try to, you know, diminish it, right? Yeah. Um, but I always say, well, if it's just the red carpet, then why aren't you here? Mm. Why am I here, and why aren't, why aren't you, you know? So, you moving here to America gives us the record with Chris Brown and French Montana and all those records after? Yeah. Did you date Chris Brown? No, <laughs> no. Where did that rumor come from? I I think it was because, you know, like as an artist, um, we had really like, you know, a lot of respect towards each other. And we spent probably like three weeks or, or more like in the studio. Wow. But we've, you know, and, and I think, you know, when we... We've already followed each other on Instagram like three years or four years before then, but we never really like, you know, had a chance to, oh shit, like I I love your art. Like I love your songs. Oh wait, like you did the, oh no, like let's let's hang out. Or like let's let's create something together. But it actually, you know, when we had the conversation, it was for me to play uh, um, some of my songs to him and he wants me to be on one of his records. Um, on one of his albums, the deluxe album. And we just ended up, you know, talking about art. We, we ended up talking about music. And then he found out that I also direct my own music videos as he is also a director for, yeah. you know, all of his music videos. So we just developed that sense of, okay, when we're together in the studio, we just talked about music, you so know? Does the overdose come from just totally original, like out of nothing? Yeah. Sick. It's a great record. Yeah, and and we we actually have other like eight other records, you know, together. Whoa. But we we never put it out. Hopefully, you know, if if the the time is right. But we don't want to like 
you know, push it if the time is not right. The time is not right. Yeah, weren't you going to do a whole duets album together? We actually planned on doing that, but... Um, you know, obviously, when I was under, at that time, I was under a certain label um, for this, you know, again, like we did a single deal for that because I felt like, you know, what that's what I needed to do at that point uh, for Overdose. Um, I needed the, you know, the, the big machine behind it. Um, but we were actually supposed to put out the, the duet album after that. But, you know, like there's like, you know, just a lot of things happen behind the scene that, um, you know, we ended up not putting it out. But, you know, we're, we always talk about it. We're always like, oh, my God, like we, we need to put this one out. Oh, my. Yes, of course, like this one. But, you know, I, I, I do think that when the universe feels it's the time, I know that it's going to be out. Yeah, you'll know. Yeah. By the way, you can listen to all of Agnes Moe's music on Amazon Music. The entire discography is there for you, including your most recent song, Patience. Yeah. But that came out in 2022. It's been a while. Yeah, exactly. And I think like that's one of my, um, I don't know, like I, I, I got a lot of accomplishments from from that too. Um, top 10, you know, yeah. billboards um, for R&B. Uh, and then it's uh, for, for iHeart, it's also um, one of the most played R&B songs in 2022. So it was, it was kind of, you know, Really encouraging. Did you find R and B, or did R and B find you? Like, how did uh, you get there? It's a great question because we talked about this all the time. Um, you know, like the first uh, uh, movie that really introduced me to uh, um, you know R and B was actually Sister Act Two. <laughs> <laughs> American classic. Exactly. And I was in Indonesia. Um, I think. Eighth grade, if I'm not mistaken, eighth or ninth grade, eighth grade, if I'm not mistaken, and um, the teacher would basically say, "Okay, well, you know, um, no practice today, so you just l watch this amazing uh, movie." And I was like, "Just there, you know? Okay, cool. Like, what what should we watch?" And it's Sister Act too, <laughs> and it just blew my mind because I remember how I felt, like what I was feeling watching that movie. You know, like just, oh, like music can be this fun. Music can be this saucy. Like, oh my God, like what is this that I'm feeling, right? And that's how I've, I I tried to find Lauren Hill. And then after that, obviously, you know, uh, Brandy and then, you know, all these other R&B, uh. you know, great R&B artists after that. Um, but yeah, but it's uh, Sister Act too. That's crazy. Yeah. What record do you f feel was really R&B from you? Like the first one? Uh, which, which one? Like, like the, which one of your own records? Oh, really? my own records. I do think that it's definitely promises and patience. That's Those hard. are like the, the two most, you know, R and B records that I've put out. Uh, um, do you have an album ready to go? Yeah, I do. I actually do. You know what? I actually have scratched four albums. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Why? Yeah. yeah. I, I remember that. Um, cause I was supposed to put out an album um in 2015 um but that one actually i got screwed over by um you know the label um that is now non-existent and i don't want to get into it but we you know like it was it was tough to because like those are my babies you know like i wrote it you know i wrote with some of my you know my amazing friends oh, and um, the, the label has held, held you from releasing it yeah oh yeah. so you don't have access to those songs at that time no um do you now yeah i do oh wow cool yeah, I so do. you can release them yeah but then it's like it's already you know seven years and yeah. and i i don't sound like that anymore and i and the message that i want to put out like I, i'm in a totally different space um but it was one of those things where i finally had to accept that okay you know what if i really want to do this right um i have to be able to just own my own masters and and mm. you know like and and that kind of navigated me through um, all the decisions that, you know, I'm, I'm making afterwards. Um, whether it's, you know, me having to have part of the masters, 50% at least, or, you know, like if I want to do a, a record label, a record deal, then it should be, you know, just a single deal, yeah. you know, or actually doing it uh, independently and prom promises and patience. I did it independently um, as well. So what do you learn by releasing music independently? 
Um, I think um, I think I rem- I I remember finding out that a lot of people that these labels hire, I can actually also outsource the same people. Yeah, they just want money. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, sure. okay. Now that I know that they're also actually outsourcing <laughs> it from other companies, and I could probably just do my research and just you know hire the same people <laughs> with the flexibility. Um, <laughs> But I mean, but no disrespect though, because I feel like to have that gigantic, you know, machine behind you, especially when it comes to, you know, funding wise yeah. um, and connection. But again, because I've been in the business, at least like in the US for like 10 years, I think I'm confident enough to know that, oh, okay, like I, I know who to call. Uh. You know, I, I know who to hire when it comes to like my marketing. Oh, I know how to hire when it comes to like my PR. Oh wait, like I know that that's not the right person because the company's big, but the, the people are not really, you know. So so like I've learned a lot um, by being in one and being and just being independent. Um, so I get to compare, you know, like which one and kind of like see the flaws in being independent and then try to learn it also from like, okay, like the, the, the good thing about being in, in a label is that they have this, this. So I study, yeah. like, like what I said, like I study it. And so now I have my own music label, you know, so for example, you know, the one with the Sierra that, that, that I just put yes. out. Um, it's under um, my own label, and then maybe in a year or so, I'm gonna sign um, artists. What is that like to get Sierra on a record? It's pretty surreal because you know, not only that she's like a household name, she really inspires a lot of girls. You know, to uh, the the dance, you know, in, in within the, the the dance community, and just being super like saucy and also sing at the same time, and you know, uh, being so pretty but also like edgy at the same time. So, um, so yeah, I mean, just knowing that she loves the record and she wants to be on it, it's it's big. It's big. It's big. Yeah. That's like, sure. Yeah, it's like a huge stamp of approval. Absolutely, absolutely. By the way, you can listen to all of Agnes's music. It's all on Amazon Music, including that brand new one with Sierra. Link in the description below. What's the story behind? Like, what's the song about? How did you get Sierra on there? Did you guys work together in the studio? Like, how did yeah, it Yeah, so I remember when I worked with Tiron. Tiron is one of the co-writers, uh, one of the writers. Um, I mean, he, he, he definitely... Uh, writes a lot of hits, you know, um, for other people. Um, and when we were in the studio, cause I, I remember, you know, we worked together for my other records with other writers as well. Um, but for this one, me and him, we just, you know, we, we just, uh, we were in the studio and we were talking about, okay, like what direction do I want this new sound to be? Um, <laughs> And I told him something that sounds like an Agnes Mo sound. And he, he was like, hmm, Agnes Mo sound. And I said, no, it needs to be like an identity record. Mm-hmm. You know, something that like, and, and he, he said it like perfectly. He said, yeah, because you know, like when you're, when you're going to studio, sometimes there are like new artists that would say, oh, I want to sound like, so and so, then I, you know, like we, we were talking about how this Agnes Mo sound needs to be like that for like, you know, maybe other new artists would come to the studio and say, hey, I want something uh, like the Agnes Mo sound, mm-hmm. right? But that's to solidify identity. Yeah. And, 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 um, we, and I said, no pressure. I don't want to be boxed in like, oh, I need to do an R&B record. Oh, I want to do a pop record. Oh, I want to do a crossover. No, like I just want to do something that speaks to me directly and that would put me at the edge of my seat because I, I can't wait to dance to it. You know, and it's all about feelings, right? And so I worked with Rob Knox uh, and he's an amazing producer. Um, uh, and and I think like he he he's from Egypt if I'm not mistaken, but he lives in in LA. Um, but he has this like like this sound that's just almost like a tribal sound, you know, uh, uh, that that he brings because it it's also um, it also sounds like a little bit like Indonesian traditional sound. So when we work together. 
I don't know. There's just this really unique elements that he put in that I feel like all, only non-Americans would understand. <laughs> you know, like just like this little, these little, I don't know, um, just maybe the sound of the snare, mm -hmm. you know, that, that you would only hear it in Egypt or like you would only hear it in but Southeast Asia. That's how you build an identity, right? Yeah, exactly. And in... And, and, when we work together, it's almost like we're so in tune that I didn't really need to tell him, oh, this percussion is what I want. No, like he, he gets it right away because it's embedded within him as well. So does it set a sonic tone for the rest of the album? Yeah. So, so um, you know, he produced four uh, records out of my album. And then obviously, like I, I worked with other amazing producers as well. Um, and with uh, Get Loose, uh, with Sierra... It's that one, it's the first song that Tiron and I got to create on the first day. So I think like that kind of like sets up the whole mood of the, you know, seven days yeah. of our sessions, you know, because like now we got this and we know that it's a hit. We know that it's like, you know, uh, uh, breaking the barriers type of record, right? It's an identity record. Now we should beat that. So like the day after that and the day after that, it was just about, okay, now we got that. What else can we bring to the table? You know, and, and it was really necessary like to have that, you know, um, just really great first day, you know, cause it kind of sets you up in the right mood. And then after that, you really don't have any pressure. Like, oh man, like that song yesterday sucked. So now <laughs> like we really got to have, you know, an amazing song. No, we, we didn't have no pressure. And, uh, uh, T, uh, uh, T Ron worked um, with Sierra uh, for, I believe, Level Up, if I'm not mistaken. So they've, you know, they've had um, amazing relationships already. So when she heard the record, it just makes sense. So I was like, no, like I freaking love the record and I've al al already worked with the writer and, you know, like we love each other. And then, you know, so it just, it just made sense the universe wanted to happen and everything exactly. fell into place exactly listen to the record it's all on amazon music by the way that song and every other song she has out but not the album yet because it's on the way yeah uh click the link in the description below final thoughts dan yeah well there'll be more ballads because you put out patience then you release the acoustic version people love the acoustic version yeah yeah definitely there, there's one no actually um two ballads that are like strong strong ballads that i have in my album so i can't really um i can't wait to put it out because i know that my fans would definitely love it they're always begging me to put out ballad songs um but yeah for sure Fingers and toes. I want more ballads. Yeah. So let's go. Uh, Agnes, it's more like vibe. I think ballads. they like the that's vulnerable fine. side of you. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what exactly. it is. Exactly. It's like the, um, I always say, like the vulnerability of a bad bitch. Mm. <laughs> it's, you know, how I, you know, um, how I identify myself, you know, how my music is identified. You know, it's a, it's a vulnerability of a bad bitch. I love it. Yeah. Do you think a song sung in Indonesian could be successful internationally? I do think so. I do think so. Um, it just got to be right. Yeah. You know, like you, you got to make sure that because it's never about just a one hit thing. Right. Like if you think about it, if you only want a hit song, then you could just, you know, do something out of what's the trend now. Yes. But the thing is what I always um, remind myself is that. I'm building a legacy over here, mm. you know, so it's not just about me having a one hit, you know, and then that's it. I want people to like, I, I want to be able to look back at the songs that I put out and actually be proud of each one of them. And not just proud, but really like telling a story. And it doesn't have to be right at the moment, you know, but it just got to be true. Like everything that I put out, especially after I moved to the, to, to LA, it's been about, you know, putting putting a visual diary through my music. And again, people don't have to understand that. Um, and there's always this battle between, you know, um, making myself happy as an artist and then being true to myself. Um, letting them be a part of this very fragile, right? Like this very fragile space um, to the fans, um, but also making them happy. It's it's a hard, it's a it's a difficult balance. Yeah, but it's a balance you figured out and you continue to figure it out. Yeah. Like, there's no, 
it's constantly changing. That's the fun of it. Yeah, and and I think you know, and I, and I said this um, uh, when because because I, I have a wax figure at Madame Tussauds. Huge. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and and we we had this uh, big reveal in Singapore, um, and I remember writing the speech on the plane. And guess what? Like I've always had like the the best ideas on you know whenever I travel like on the plane because I feel like it's just you and and your thoughts you know and quiet and everything, um, and there was no pressure right like of like okay let me write something magical or let me write you know uh, what's like the message behind no there's n- none of that it was just me pouring out my heart and I think that's the reason why when I reread it uh, probably like two months ago I was like wait this is my message. Like th- this is what I want put, w- want to put out to the world. And it's about me being an advocate for all the quirky kids out there who haven't figured out, figured out anything yet in their life or like in the process of trying to figure out, you know, their life, you know, and, and, and accepting that my legacy is about being a disruptive, raw, yet authentic artist, you know, and accepting that. Cause like, if you think about it, Everything that is worth um, celebrating, everything is disruptive. You th- if you think really? about it, you know, like the change and everything, it needs to be, you know, radical. Oh, anything important or impactful exactly. had to destroy something to get there. Exactly. So, so, you know, not a lot of people would want to take that role because it is hard. You know, people, you know, might misunderstand you or already have uh the intention to misunderstand you you know uh, um people might you know think that you're crazy mm-hmm. um but look at what crazy's got you know like <laughs> got me here. like I, I you know the crazy got me here totally you know and but that's also a story that a lot of people can feel understood by and a message that people need right? yeah yeah and so it's not just you know me being an advocate for oh you have to have like a perfect story like you have to have a perfect life you know i don't just there's a lot of stories that I can't say because it's too private. That is like, if you listen to it, if you heard it, you would be like, wait, what? You you went through that? But because of that, I'm, I'm me. You know, like I, I could um, be uh, um, empathetic to people's journey. You know, I can have this imaginations when I write, you know, my music video treatments uh, um, because like I've gone through a lot, you know. You're a product of what you've gone through. Absolutely. But so is everybody. And yeah. a lot of times people just want to feel understood and yeah. escape at the same time. And yeah. that's exactly what your music offers. Exactly. So try it out if you haven't already. But if you you definitely listen to her music. But you should listen on Amazon Music. And also listen to the new stuff that has Ciara, which is uh, so not casual whatsoever. <laughs> Absolutely Yeah, iconic. man. Like, even, like, when we, um, when we did the music video, like, I, I could easily say that it's one of my best music videos I've ever done. I mean, you have to be life. so proud of that. Yeah, and and you know, working with some people that I that I call my family, you know, even my my choreographer, like we've worked together since Coke Bottle era. So we've we've known each other um and we've worked together for maybe like 10 years, you know, on and off. Um and then you know, just just being able to put my imaginations out there and actually, you know, seeing it and look at the edits and then picking up, you know, what elements that I want to put out there and obviously being able to infuse um, a little bit of my Indonesian culture, Indonesian traditional dance to it and make it saucy. Just like, you know, it's like a new thing, but it's really not because it's, you know, it's Indonesian traditional, but we make it, you know, like we, we, we make it saucy. But so the bigger you get, the bigger Indonesia gets. So, uh, you know, the fact that you're going international, like who you are and your culture will follow you no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So because of that, like your entire country ends up growing in popularity. Yeah. So the idea that like your neighbors in Indonesia wouldn't want you to go international just is kind of the opposite. Yeah. In my mind. Like, it just makes no sense. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, um, sometimes people don't think that big, yeah. right? You know, I feel like people would just think about what makes them comfortable. And for a lot of people, other people's success is not comfortable for them because it reminded them of what they could be, but they failed of doing, 
you know, yeah. whereas it's like, bro, like you could actually create your own success if you don't really mind other people's business that much, you know, like, and, and I think like, that's the message that I always share with my fans. You know, you know what I'm busy with being a good student for me. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm not busy pointing my fingers to, to someone else or trying to judge, to, to trying to be judgmental of people, other, other people's journey. Uh, um, having more, I don't know, man, like just being forgiving, like more forgiving when it, and, and towards yourself as well. You know, I think that's, that's really important. Like I, 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 for, I have to do the hard work of for, not just forgiving other people who have, you know, done me wrong, but also forgiving myself yeah. sometimes, you know, for man, like I should have done that. Oh man, I, sh I, I, sh you know, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I should, you know, and, but being able to like, you know what? I have flaws. I'm a human being. And I will constantly learn from it. And if people don't, you know, F with my journey, then F That's them. A, yeah, if they don't give know? you the grace to grow, then exactly. they're not supposed to be in your energy. Yeah, and, and I do think that the world needs more forgiving people, man. Amen. You know, like seriously, um, being, uh, you know, um, an immigrant, really, like if you think about it, right? Because like I came from thousands of miles away and then being a woman in this very male-dominated um, industry, like we, we need to be able to be more, um, to lend more grace and, and forgiveness, you know, because it's, it's hard. Like the world is already hard yeah, as it is. it is. What's been the biggest challenge coming from Indonesia to America and trying to like break in and be a massive star here too? I think to find, you know... Um, Cause it's like this, right? And 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 I've had this conversation with uh, Timbaland as well. You know, actually, like shout out to 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 Tim because he's definitely the first producer to ever you know like mm -hmm. vouch me totally. and give that stamp. You know, before like years before you know any other artist. Um, we 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 talked about this because like I had a, an amazing session in Miami um, four or five months ago, um, and. We, we talked about being ahead of the game, but sometimes being too far ahead is also not good because the timing, you know, the oh, yeah. people mm -hmm. are probably not ready. So I think like the biggest challenge is that, is like, you know that the trend is gonna be like this in like the next five years, but then how do you balance that? How do you be ahead of the game, but not too far ahead of the game that people wouldn't understand it? Yeah. You know, so that was definitely the biggest, you know, the biggest challenge. And honestly, other than that is um, to be able to listen to your inner kid within you mm. um, with all these noises out there uh, trying to tell you that you know, you, you're, you, don't, you don't deserve, you know, yeah. what you've accomplished. Like, just that, and, and to have, like, that bare heart. Because, okay, I can go deep into it, right? And I'm so excited about this. Because as an artist, what people don't know is that not a lot of people would bring you to their vulnerability. You know what I mean? Like, just as a person. Sometimes you can show up, show up at work. As long as I do my work, you don't need to do, you, you don't need to know about my personal life. You don't need to know, like, what I'm going through in my life as long as I can, you know, yeah. you know, show up at work and do my work. But the thing is, as an artist, being vulnerable and showing the world our vulnerability is the work. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, do you know how hard it is? to be able to like try to put something real and genuine and you know out of our heart and still being judged by it well but also that judgment also is matched by understanding and people relating to it absolutely and people feel absolutely. feeling seen absolutely and that's the reason why you know like you got to know for sure like what you want to put out to the world and uh. if you're ready for it you know because um, again, like putting yourself out to the world without losing yourself is a balance that not a lot of people can handle. I'm not saying that, you know, people can't handle it, but I'm just saying that it's probably the toughest balance um, people have to do. But listen to that balance in yeah. all of Agnes's music. We're going to put a link in the description below. It's all on Amazon Music. So please click away. Final thoughts? Did Timbaland work on this last, the, the album that's uh, coming up? Sounds yes. like a yes. Sick. <laughs> Come back when the album's officially out, yes, please. Yes, yes. And it's and it's uh it's it's a cool um 
I don't know, man. Like it's it's really a cool um, moment for me to be able to, you know, uh, now go to his house and and <laughs> just you know be in his element, but also at the t- at the same time he wants to be in my element, you know. Um, and to share that safe space together, and and I think when um, we first worked together years ago, uh, I always looked at him as my mentor, right? And um, now I still look at him as as my mentor, but I think he looks at me as a colleague yeah, now, peer. as a partner. And I think to to see that growth and and to be able to hear like in the interview um, that that we had uh, again, like I haven't put that out. Um, like how he talks about me and how he's been seeing my growth and everything. Um, it's just amazing, you know? And, you know, like I said, I met Nelly Furtado. I met, you know, Justin Timberlake. And when I met them, they spoke about how they first found me was through Timberland years ago playing my music. That's crazy. That's awesome. And, and for, like, because I've always known from, you know, like, uh, some people that he's been playing my music uh, um, when we, we when we worked together for uh, on Coke Bottle and some other songs, uh, but I never knew that you know uh, that he actually played it to all these other artists. That's that, like validating that, in a new way. Yeah, and, and, and like when when we met, like when we talked about it, Nelly, Nelly was like, "I remember you." Like Timlin used to talk to talk about you all the time. So I was like, "Oh wow, oh shit." No, nah, like when people are talking behind your back the same way they talk yes! to your face, it's real. And that's the reason why I feel like the level of respect that I give Tim, like, will always be the same. Like, he's always that first person that vouched me and to give me, you know, the possibility to just be in my elements instead of like, you know, being a know it all. Like, oh no, because he has the right, if you think about it, he <laughs> has the right to be a know it all. Like, he really does he, know it all. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he's Timberland. But hit. even that. You know, he didn't do it. He asked me, you know, who am I as an artist? He asked me what sound I want to put out. And I think, like, that humility, um, you know, beyond his him being a genius in music, it just, it's everything. Uh, I'm excited for this album. Yeah. Hear it. Please come back on the show. Yes. Agnes Mo. Thank you so much. You. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's, it's um, I, I... I needed this. No, this is incredibly <laughs> yeah. special. So thanks for being here. And I've been so incredibly fascinated by you. And I thank you for your journey and thank sharing you. your truth and also sharing your art. It means thank a lot. Thank you, man. Thank you for you know providing me a safe space to talk about my journey. Literally anytime. The door is always open. Okay. Listen to all of Agnes Moe's music on Amazon Music. Agnes Moe, everybody. Woo!